Long story short, 10 milligrams of boron a day seems to be maximally beneficial for people that are not only boron depleted, We are recording. Great. Hi, everybody. I'm Damon, and happy December. If you're looking at the screen, no, that is not cool, although we are getting relatively close to Christmas. So for everybody who celebrates, early Merry Christmas. I don't know when you're watching this. Happy holidays if you're not. Uh, and what I wanted to talk to you today is about boron. And I love how the first picture that I click actually talks about breakfast boron capsules boosts testosterone, because that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So... This article I read way back in the day, probably about 2017, nothing boring about boron, great dad joke first of off. Second off, it has a myriad of amazing benefits for general health biomarkers. That's gonna be Abigail and Jax, they like to freak out anytime that someone comes home. So it is roughly midnight, so someone is just coming back in, but essentially, it is a powerhouse when it comes to providing you with anti-inflammatory effects, better bone health, better estrogen levels, better free testosterone, uh, things like vitamin D levels. There is no end really to the insane amount of benefits that you can get by incorporating a sufficient level of boron in your diet. Now you can use things like uh, calciofructoboronate, which is the natural version of boron found in some foods, which they have a handy dandy little chart right down here on the bottom uh, where it shows you things like, you know, avocado, how much you typically get in a serving, things like apricots, yada, yada, yada. Um, but for the most part, we can see that uh, you get a unbelievably high amount, but it's also relatively inaccurate. You know, some soils that are higher in boron typically yield uh, potentially more benefits than others. Consumption of more than two brazil nuts a day may result in selenium toxicity. So you really have to be selective with what you choose and how you choose to get it. So typically people will go for boron supplementation. Now, if you look at the back of your multivitamin, like uh, I do here, I have mine, and my multivitamin gives me one milligram of boron as boron citrate. Now, if I wanted to leverage boron in terms of general antioxidant effects and for my testosterone and estrogen regulation, I would do three milligrams a day. So I would need an additional two milligrams per day. If I wanted athletic performance from getting my bound testosterone more freely circulating, things like the benefits that I get with my estrogen regulation as a result, I would go for six milligrams per day. If I wanted to really maximally leverage it, I would take about 10 milligrams per day. And they go ahead and they cite all of their, uh, their sources for us down here on the bottom. And it is incredible to see how comprehensive and thorough this is because this is a very large meta-analysis. And you can see here the benefits of sex steroid hormone metabolism, estrogen and prostate cancer, the effects that it has on carbon-containing polyhedral boron clusters is a new selective estrogen receptor modulator for bone health. It talks about the benefits that it has in um, just generally producing more bones. It helps with osteoblasts production. And if you don't know what osteoblasts are, or uh, if you've ever taken an anatomy one or like an anatomy physiology lab, osteoblasts build bone osteoclasts crunch or break down bones. So that's one way to think about it that I learned uh, way back in the day when I was in a, an anatomy lab a couple years ago. Um, but yeah, they talk about the dosing here and I really wanted to riff on this because originally I was doing like a video that was breaking down natural testosterone boosters, uh, specifically for one that I used because it was a vegan. It was called Cell Block 80. And with that, actually, I think that's actually a movie. Um, <laughs> I, I'll put a picture up of it on the screen, but a lot of the other ingredients didn't really do much. I also didn't notice much benefit in athletic performance, but they had five milligrams of boron, and that's what reminded me of this article, because that's really what prompted me to get it. I looked for vegan supplements with boron, and I found that, and it was, it was uh, supposed to be pretty good, but I think that for the price, it just wasn't beneficial. But I wanted to riff on this because Essentially, it provides you with a myriad of benefits. So it helps prevent vitamin D deficiency by helping vitamin D stay in your blood longer by preventing the hydroxylase of some enzymes that will then break down vitamin D in your blood. They have the entire section here where they talk about UVB interaction with your skin, your skin then making precocalciferol and then calciferol as a result uh, being established in your liver. And then it talks here about CYP enzymes, which are the super family of metabolites and enzyme reactions, well not metabolites, enzyme reactions that will be responsible for me metabolism of practically everything. CYP450, if you didn't know, is the um, drug sort of enzyme where it starts to break down and process things like um, steroid hormones, like the 17-alpha alkylated steroids and the methylated steroids, as well as things like 
um, the medicines that you can't have with grapefruits. So if you didn't know, grapefruits will, uh, when ingested, even grapefruit juice will upregulate the activity of CYP450. CYP450 will then create a higher concentration of bioavailability for the drug. So if you take 100 milligrams of I don't know, let's just say for the sake of example, drug X, and it is 80% bioavailable, so you're getting 80 milligrams of that drug, but then you have grapefruit juice, it could be 93%, and that could cause overdose if it's a longer acting drug that stays in your system longer. So that's why they say don't have grape juice with your medication. So it talks here a little bit more about that. It talks about the reason that it will help with the preferential differentiation between the hormones. So here we have 17 beta estradiol increase when boron is supplemented. This is because in postmenopausal women receiving hormone replacement therapy, a reduction in E2 catabolism rather than E2 synthesis is responsible for this. And that's because of the hydroxylation factors that we talked about earlier, which is already hydroxylated at the 3 and 17 positions. In addition to this, this indicates that boron is a potential inhibitor for microsomal enzymes that catalyze the insertion of hydroxyl groups. Uh, Vicnol just means close by to existing hydroxyl groups and steroids. So here it talks about how the interactions between the hydroxylase enzymes are impacted or rather muted by the uh, supplementation of boron. Now alongside of this, boron will also significantly improve the absorption of magnesium and the deposition of bone. And if you want to get more into that, there's the entire section on the top where it talks about the osteoblast. Essentially what it does is it will cause uh, an increase in the amount of, oh yeah, here it is. That's the section I was looking for, sorry. Bone morphogenic proteins. That's what I wanted to get into. So there is these things, which is BMP, 4, 6, and 7, plus the mRNA expression of RUNT-related transcription factor 2, RUNX2. You want to have increased magnesium due to its ability for, okay, yeah, it's going to talk about that for us, for the fundamental involvement in ATP production and serves as a cofactor for more than 300 enzymes in lipid, protein, and nucleic acid synthesis because of its positive charge, magnesium stabilizes cell membranes, balances the actions of calcium, and functions as a tr signal transducer. Now, it's also important to note that magnesium also balances the action of calcium because not only will that help uh, with the bone health but it will also help with uh, other factors like muscle contraction so again another reason why boron is beneficial it talks about hypomagnesia and how it is able to help with serum concentrations of magnesium which we talked about earlier it produces a marked benefit in oxidative stress and heavy metal toxicity as well as some of the benefits that come alongside of that so you know no chronic inflammation as a result of stressors it will help with the uh, okay, yeah. the inhibitor of 24 hydroxylase, which is the reason why vitamin D stays in your system a little bit longer. It also helps with uh, biomolecules that contain ribose, SAMe. Uh, there's there's literally just an endless amount of benefit. Here we also see that it is uh, chemoprotective as well as being neuroprotective by helping regulate the amount of estrogen that we have. And even though it's such a small molecule and the amount that is supplemented is relatively low, Again, you could go up to like 10 milligrams per day in these studies, and this is a big meta-analysis, by the way, so they have so much go a little bit higher, but the ones that note like two to 300 milligrams of boron, it's not elemental boron, by the way. It is like calcio-fructoboronate, which is the natural version, which means that its elemental yield is much lower because it has to be metabolized and broken down and then freely circulating, so only an upper limit of 20 milligrams per day for individuals 18 and older. None of them have, uh, yeah, so... No EARs or DRIs have been set, only an upper limit of like 20 milligrams per day. Personally, I would keep that much lower just to be on the side of caution at maybe 10 milligrams per day because that is the maximal benefit that is derived. If you really want to push the button, you can maybe try to leverage like 15 milligrams, but I don't even see the need to because I'm not aware of any like genetic polymorphisms that would inhibit your ability to freely circulate and have an impact with boron. So long story short, 10 milligrams of boron a day seems to be maximally beneficial for people that are not only boron depleted, but are looking to leverage it for benefits in terms of athletic performance as well as antioxidant profile. If you have any questions or any comments on boron, things you want to learn more about, you know, is one version more than the other, uh, feel free to leave a comment. You're more than welcome to do so. If you have any comments or questions about anything that I've discussed here, you know, I am more than happy to answer them. I strongly encourage it. And alongside of that, if you have a question about this or anything in general, and you don't want to leave a comment on the video for whatever reason, you're more than welcome to go ahead and DM me on Instagram. My Instagram is just Damon is vegan, all one word. You're... But aside from that, I hope that you all had a great day. I hope that everybody has learned something. And until next time, toodles.